some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked and Brad and I are finally doing our top 10 games of 2021. This year, or I guess last year, uh, we're doing this a little bit later than we normally do. I think in the years past, we've always done it mid to late December. Um, but I mean, there were a lot of games that kind of came out last minute that at least for me, I wanted to either at least play or record and get up on the channel. So better late than never, as I, uh, as I always say, whenever it comes to my channel, but uh, yeah, 2021 in the, in terms of gaming, it was fantastic. So like, at least for me. Yeah. And I have uh, there, I do have some holes in the 2021 games just because I wasn't gaming with groups as much and doing mm -hmm. more cooperative solo um, sure. except for some of the stuff I was playing with you. Yeah. Um, so I do have some holes of games that I know probably would be on this list if I played them. Um, but uh, I'm sure they'll probably be on yours. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We'll have probably, hmm. I'll probably say two crossover. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say two crossover. I'll say three, maybe. Three? Okay. Two for sure, probably, and maybe three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah, this one, this year, it was actually, it was pretty difficult. Uh, I I knew what was going to be my number one. As soon as I played the game, I'm like, there, nothing's beating this, and it's it better be a damn good game if it's going to. Uh, but the in-between, literally from two to number 11, counting the honorable mention, yeah, I, as I kept playing games, like, certain ones just kept getting pushed back. And I'm like, wow, like, those games that are initially on the list just quickly kind of bump out. It's wild. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so without <laughs> further ado, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, so, Happy New Year. Let's hope that 2022 was great, both in the gaming world and uh and out of the gaming world but let's go ahead and talk about fantastic games that were uh in 2021 uh i believe i'm first right yes cool so my honorable mention was a game that uh whenever i first played it i was like this is pretty pretty awesome and then i played it another time and it was weird because my feelings kind of waned on it a little bit uh but then as i was ranking it like i was kind of like you know this is a solid game it's marketed i think actually quite poorly but once you kind of ignore the marketing and i'll explain it whenever the game is shown but uh the game is a, a fantastic experience and uh yeah you can go ahead and pull that up and it is unsettled this is the newest game by Orange Nebula. Uh, what I mean by poorly marketed is on Board Game Geek. It is literally described as a sandbox game, uh, which it is very much not, like, in any way. Like, and it's really a survival puzzle game. Uh, so you have your core actual just just game the the components of it but then how you play it is you have to have those planet boxes mm -hmm. uh and each planet has three different ways that it can kind of be played it has like different uh overall goals to complete so i believe there are six total planets out so that means you have 18 games of unsettled to play and each of them have their own unique way of playing they have uh like different like unique cards to the planet and then locations that you go on not quite like seventh continent or tainted grail like the locations don't connect but each location has like something unique about it and then uh depending on the um goal that you have to complete then you want to go to various locations and for the run through that we did we just chose a random planet we did a uh like a water planet, but the, the planet was like alive and it when it it wanted balance, like ecosystem balance. So you had to do a good, like two good things to equal it out. And if you didn't, then the planet's pissed off. So this one is uh is an honorable mention just mainly because the other 10 I like a lot better. Uh and I mentioned in the discussion that this one will only I feel like be relevant 
as long as they support it. And then as soon as I uploaded the video, I find out, oh, nope, they're going on Kickstarter again for more planets. So this game has life. They have a lot of things they can do with it with a bunch of different unique planets. Um, so I highly recommend it because it is a really, really cool puzzle survival game. And that is my number 11, Unsettled. This is one that I had backed when it was on Kickstarter. And then they didn't even really do a super good job on the Kickstarter of explaining what it was because mm -hmm. I was really interested in this because I loved um, Vindication so much. Yeah. And this was their next game. And then I got to looking at it and I was like, this does not sound even remotely anything like, you know, I enjoy. Yeah. But after hearing more stuff, then it's like, so, you know, I mean, they, they lost my backing just because it didn't really even match up. Match up no, yeah, I, I, I mean, that <laughs> totally makes sense. Like whenever they're saying sandbox, like, because I even had to look up the term sandbox because I'm like, maybe I don't know what it means. But no, it, I knew exactly because I play a shit ton of video games that mm -hmm. it, it's like, no, it, you, you don't get to do whatever you want. It's not it's not what. I was initially expecting of like, oh man, you go to a planet and you just do whatever on that planet, kind of like a, you know, plug and play seventh continent on different planets. Like that's what I initially thought. Nope. It is a bot, not, not box standard. It is a, a one-off go to a planet and then like <clears throat> finish the goals and then, and that's it. So, uh, now, the, the variety of playing each planet, yeah, like I said, you have three different missions you have, so you have that. I have played, like, the very beginning planet. It was, like, a fungus kind of planet. I played that one twice, and it was fun both times. The way that the locations are going to come out is going to dictate how hard or difficult your survival is. Uh, it always kind of comes down to the wire. So very cool, very interesting system. Um other problem that I have with this is there, and it's the same with Vindication, Orange Nebula gets so close to having perfect boxes, storage systems, but then they ruin it in one way or another. In Vindication, they came out with one expansion shortly after, and it's like, okay, well, this doesn't fit in your game tray base box, so now it's useless. And then Unsettled has, because they wanted it to be like, you have four trays and you organize it all. And then you just store those. So whenever you play, you just pop those out and you're done. Uh, it fits two planets in it, but you have four others. So you just have four random planet boxes lying around. And to add insult to injury, they had they, every planet box had game trays. So it all organized all the pieces like very nicely. But they provided sleeves specifically for this game. It's like Orange Nebula, Unsettled Sleeves. The game trays don't fit them. So once you sleeve them with their sleeves, you they even, they even say, throw away the insert. I'm like, why? <laughs> why do you fuck it up? Yeah. Anyway, I mean, that has nothing to really do with the game. It's just kind of a waste of plastic at this point. But mm. maybe that's why. They're like, hey, Earth sucks. And our game's about other planets. So <laughs> let's just ruin Earth. <laughs> It's very unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Uh, that's yeah, so anyway, that's my number 11, way. Unsettled. All right, so my number 11 is a game that I threw on um, at the very last second, and it's in my honorable mention because I I haven't played it. Enough. I mean, it's, I know it's a good game. It's, it's, it's solid. I just haven't got every aspect into it yet. It's a cooperative game um, called Masters of the Night. You're telling me about this one. Yeah. Um, so this is one I, I, I just saw it at the game store, picked it up. Um, it's Aries Games, and they usually don't do games like this. You know, they, mm -hmm. they're more. But this is pretty much just a, a card-based game. If you have the deluxe edition that was on Kickstarter, it has minis and stuff like that. Mine doesn't have minis. It's just yeah. basic because it really is one of those that you don't even need minis for. Um, the theme of this game is you are – um, taking on the role of a vampire, you're, you're playing the bat. You're playing the vampires, the bad guys, okay. um, and you play as a as a member of a vampire family, and you've just kind of arrived. You know, I, I, I from the sounds of it, you're like on a a train or a boat or something like that, and you just kind of arrive into this country, 
and you are trying to gain a foothold and um, trying to survive and then try to establish your your empire or your rule you know you're trying to get your stuff going and then there's these group of people that know you're there that are trying to take you out and that's the 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 adversaries of the game you know that you're that you're trying to defeat or stay away from and stuff it's it's a simple fairly simplistic game i mean you lay you lay out um like i think nine nine cards i believe uh there are like locations and you kind of move around those locations um but you uh you're just kind of doing i don't know it's totally cooperative i play with i play it solo with two characters so far um each each location has an ability um and then the characters themselves are pretty neat like unique the the family members that you get to pick um okay i like playing that little girl because she's creepy but um (laughs) but uh but yeah you know it's I don't know if this designer's done anything else. I, like I said, I've just seen this. I, I didn't even know it was a 2021 game when I bought it. You know, I just I, saw Aries yeah. games. I saw, saw vampires, nice cooperative game. Got it. And he's it actually only, plays. Uh, what's that? I was going to say, he's only done this game. Oh, okay. And, you know, and, it, and it's pretty solid. It was a Kickstarter game. I didn't even know that when we were discussing it. I didn't even know mm-hmm. it was a Kickstarter thing. Um, but uh, you kind of move around. You have uh your dice uh i'm trying to look at a picture here just to kind of but um like the basic version is pretty bait i mean you just have chits they're your characters i mean it's so it's nothing special um but uh you have dice combat and stuff like that you move around you're just pretty much just trying to survive you know events are going to come out there's these and and the things that you're fighting they aren't really it's like it's like a secret organization or these agents that are trying to take you out I, and it never really goes into it yet at least that i have have dis- discovered they're kind of like mysterious people okay. um but you uh but yeah i mean you know this one plays excellent at one player i even think bgg has it as one player preferred mm-hmm. um yep. it's super easy to play multiple characters and you can even just play with one character i mean it's it scales well but um but yeah you know this is one of those ones that kind of just jumped on last second the thing i had at the honorable mention wasn't that big of a thing so i just kind of it was easy to nudge off okay i can't remember what it was now but but uh (laughs) but this one uh you know it it, it has its place it's definitely not quite top 10 yet because i haven't played it but it, it fits in this honorable mention spot well Okay, good deal. Yeah, I remember I remember seeing this on Kickstarter. That's why I kind of knew it was, but I don't know. I just didn't. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. It's a vampire game. Because uh, a lot of vampire games are kind of coming out, and for some weird reason, they tend to blend into one overall kind of theme mm-hmm. for me. I don't know. I never, like, I think there's a one, there might be one on Kickstarter right now, like Ancient Blood or something. Right. I don't know. Vampires just don't. Like these kind of like the cool, like evil vampires, like do it for me, but movies just tend to kind of make them lame as hell. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the underworld vampires. I'm like, okay, so they're regular people, but they drink blood. All right. That's, they use guns. <laughs> How lame. Like that random soldier uses a gun. So, ooh. All right. Good deal. But yeah. This, this one is pretty neat. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's a cool one sweet yeah i did not play this all right my number 10 Ugh. uh really shocked me by how much i actually enjoyed it it's a 1v1 post-apocalyptic game that i think you would probably like uh quite a bit uh it's like a psychedelic post-apocalyptic and that is radlands gotcha uh, i believe this was backed and came out the the same year i feel like it was quick turnaround they they really nailed it so a lot of the cards and the color scheme of this is yeah like highlighter neon psychedelic think like rage 2 but good um and uh the point of the game is you have uh you have like a water tank like you're you're competing 
clans, I guess, that uh, are trying to destroy your opponent's uh, camps. And you have three camps, and there's a deck of camp cards, and you will draft those. Uh, so that you, like, and every single card is different. So those camps have special abilities that you can get, but if they're destroyed, then you obviously don't have the ability anymore. Um, trying to find out when this was funded. I just, I just pulled it up real quick, but I, I think it was the beginning of 21, early 21. Uh, I think so. Um, but I can't see that for some reason. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is uh, you have completely unique camps. That's kind of going to dictate when you draft what type of engine or strategy you're going to try to use to destroy your opponent's camps. Um, and then there is what surprised me the most about this game was how, because there's a shared deck, like similar to Memoir 44 and stuff. So the cards that you're drawing are shared and that is going to uh, determine how you're going to scrap cards because uh, it's multi-use. So you have cards that you can scrap for an action um, or you can play them when they have special abilities on them. It's just a very quick, solid, like 1v1 game that the theming of it is very, not really, I guess not really whimsical, but it's yeah, it's Mad Maxi style. It's it's over the top. It's crazy. You get really cool combos whenever you. Everyone has a like a bandit card that uh, is set off to the side, and you have to do a specific action to get those out. Because when you play events, they go on a track on one, two, or three, um, and then they'll slowly move down. So you have your bandit that goes, I believe, on the third space, and you can, as over time, once it finally hits the one spot and pops off on your turn, then you destroy an opponent's camp. And that's the major way of you trying, of you winning, but there's other ways to destroy camps. Uh, the run through I did for this was super fun. Uh, both Devin and I had very different ways of going about the game. And I, I mean, the production is gorgeous. I got the deluxe edition, which was super cheap. It was like 40 bucks for the deluxe edition and that came with a magnetic box you know uh, uh plastic cards and uh neoprene play mats that fit all in the deluxe box it's super sexy um but you also use water like water tokens to determine your actions and you only get i think three a turn but you can play a silo like have a water silo card that you have to pull into your hand on a turn to then plan for a future turn to have more water available to do more stuff. So very balanced. I was very surprised with uh, how much sharing the deck actually didn't dictate like who won. Like, cause if someone drew something, you're just like, okay, well, technically I don't even know what you drew. So I, uh, the multi-use cards helped a lot with that. But I think this is a very solid 1v1 game. Lots of replayability straight out of the box. I hope Roxley Games can support it. I think there is a lot of extra expansions they can do. One suggestion I gave in my discussion was like unique water silo abilities or, or unique uh, faction. Like, you know how you have the different camps and this time you have a bandit or, or a clan ability that you draft as well that lets you do something cool. <laughs> so I think they have some potential to include like a little bit more even more variety in a one one v one game so that's my number 10 Radland. this one was funded february 12th of 21 that's very impressive i don't know how they did it this it's year <laughs> well i mean they everyone was like super fucked by the shipping and and all that all games are getting pushed back and they're they yeah. must have an in they must like have like some mob rule where they can just be like hey hey how about we slip you a couple hundred dollars well and and this game could they could have had it a lot of it already made too yeah maybe yeah, because they're not a, i mean they're a big enough company with dice thrown and all that stuff that mm -hmm. they could have had stuff already in the process and you know yeah Oh, no. In fact, well, actually, because this company, or not this company, this game, I believe, in, uh, almost went through a like a legal dispute because of the name. Like, yeah, I, I want to say there was something like that. I can't remember the exact. Yeah, like 
it was initially, I think it was going to be canceled or it was going to go into be canceled because some weird thing about the name. I don't remember because it's been, I basically, February didn't exist last year. I, I don't yeah. know. 2021 just fucking flew by. Well, because I want to say that I think this campaign did get temporarily suspended. Maybe that's what it was. And, and then it got back, got put back on. Okay. After it might have been some suspended. sort of a dispute. So, yeah. And this designer has only made this game. So, uh, Daniel Pite, Peach, Peachnik, Pite, Peachnik. That's what I'm going to go with. So, uh, Danny P. Danny P. There you old go. Danny P. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I call him. But yeah, hopefully he has some, some expansion ideas in, in the pocket. Uh, in his back pocket and I mean apparently you can do a like a what is it like nine month turnaround which is huge in the today's day and age Mm -hmm. well with no miniatures and stuff that helps too true I mean yeah the card art is very very like wonderfully done production Mm -hmm. is awesome for 40 bucks deluxe thing of a solid card game like with that amount of replayability yeah I mean, because you could easily just, uh, I think there's enough room in the deluxe box to probably put in, yeah, maybe like a 20, 30 card clan ability deck. You just put right. that in there. That's really all I want is just unique, unique, just more variety. So you have even more of a kind of cool thing you can do. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see. All right. Well, I'll play it sometime. Um <clears throat> So my number 10 is one that I is a possibility of a crossover. I think not, you haven't said it yet, but we'll see. Okay. Um, this was one you showed me. Um, I don't typically like this theme, but uh, I really enjoyed the game that we played a bit and I went and bought it shortly after playing it. And that is philosophy of floating world. Nice. Um, this was one I really knew nothing about. I, I think I'd seen it on Kickstarter at one point, but paid no attention to it. Um, and then we played it, and uh, it's it's it was just really unique. And then the, me- the mechanisms kind of all flow together well to make it a good game. Um, that I had I hadn't really played. I don't even know if I had ever played a game that had the. Um, where you draw six cards and you hand you draw six cards out of your deck, give them to your opponent. They discard mm-hmm. one and then split them into two stacks of three and two. And then you choose which one of those stacks yeah. you use. I mean, that's, that gives you so much control and it makes it so much more of a strategic game because you know what cards they, I mean, you, you have to, it, it's like a mini game, you know, cause you're mm-hmm. like, you have to decide which one of these is going to, they're not going to be able to gain the most from. Um, and uh, all the while, you know, it, it's just, it's just, a, it's, it's a mind burner when you're trying to sit there and try to decide, okay, how am I going to split these three and two? And right. What am I going to, what am I letting my opponent do? Right. Right. Basically. <laughs> and, and it's, and it, that's neat because you, you can see what they have and you know what, I mean, you can kind of dictate in a way what their turn could be like Mm -hmm. you know i mean um so you go through that deal and you collect off a part of the card the cards have the multiple um you know icons and uses and stuff um and then you uh it says you can simultaneously because we played it both ways we played it with the each of us taking a turn and then there's Mm -hmm. simultaneous stuff the simultaneous stuff actually i didn't think that would be good but um yeah it ended up being okay because they have that little turn order track thing. So if you interrupt mm-hmm. somebody, then you fall down the track and then the next person can get a chance to do it. You know, it's right. They seem to think a lot about it. And then the part of the game that kind of gets hidden in the fact is the hidden location part of the game. You know, like at the beginning, you get a location that's your kind of your hidden, I don't know, headquarters or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the terminology mm-hmm. is in there, but, um, and you're constantly trying to filter through this stack of tokens, trying to figure out who or where they're at. And that's one of the winning mm-hmm. questions. Um, the miniatures are pretty solid in this game, you know, with the the stuff. I mean, it's just, 
I don't know. It is just, it, it all kind of gelled together to turn into a, yeah. you know, the art is awesome. The monster card art, it's tarot card size. So they're not just little cards, shoving all that art full, on the little yeah. cards. They went to the big cards. full art too. too. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And it's in their set collection. I mean, they, they've kind of just thrown, thrown all these mechanics against the wall and most of it stuck. And that's what they decided yeah. to make with the game, you know, and, and it really worked well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I agree. This one was uh, one that I backed on theme alone, just because like the art was, I was like, okay, well, I like feudal Japan. Let's just go and see, see if this one is going to be any good. Uh, Cause I got this one and the other one, the Philosophia <clears throat> dare to be wise or, and I haven't played that one yet, but it Great doesn't one. seem to be <laughs> do. It doesn't seem to do as well total like score wise anyway on board game geek so i don't know it definitely looks a lot busier than this one this one was just extremely smooth and unique in uh in like games that are coming out and it's kind of like that uh, i mean it's a deck builder is and so whenever deck builder are coming out it's just like all right well this is like the 400 other deck builders that came out. Why is this a 2021 game? You know, this one didn't feel like that. It was like, oh my God, a breath of fresh air with a new, like, like a new deck builder. So yeah, I completely agree. This one's extremely solid. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a surprise for me for sure. <clears throat> awesome. Well, my number nine, uh, yes. you can go ahead and go to it, uh, is one that, uh, you already mentioned it's a uh, philosophy of floating world <laughs> yeah uh pretty much everything that you said and the, everything that i commented on was uh this one just hit the nail on the head the one thing that i mean really sucks about it uh that i mean doesn't really bother me i thought that solo mode was actually pretty bad like i did not enjoy my time with it uh, coming from how good of a competitive game it is, I was like, okay, well, maybe the solo mode won't be horrible. It's pretty, it's pretty awful. So if you're looking to play the solo, don't bother. Yeah, I bought it hoping the solo was going to be better. Mm -hmm. It's not the worst one I've ever played, but it's not good, not, yeah. not that great. Um, you don't get the same experience for right, right? Because yeah, so we you touched on it a little bit, but the well, the main the main you know, gimmick of it is the fact that you draw your hand of five cards and your opponent decides in what order. And I have seen that in other games. I can't name one off the top of my head right now, but I know like letting your opponent dictate what you can do is in other is, man, I thought, I thought I had one. I'm like, ah, it's in this one, but I can't, can't think of it. Well, I, but the I've other seen, thing, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, but the other thing about this was the fact that of the simultaneous play. So uh, you can play it in either order and it's fine either way, but yeah, the simultaneous just makes the game click. Like uh, it also was another where you have to pay attention to what your opponent is going to do because you want to potentially, let's say you want to buy an item. You need an item really bad because you need to go fight a monster and there's only one bow and arrow out there. And so your opponent could be trying to grab that. So you have to be aware that that's what they're about to do. So you, you can, draw them out on it uh so you'd be like oh actually i want to do that first and then you swap it so that's that's just a very unique twist they have the unique deck building uh with the multi-use cards some cards have permanent abilities that you're always able to do um the resource collection set collection and then the simultaneous play yeah they they threw a lot in this game and it it works like this this is a very shocking game to and then the art like it's just absolutely gorgeous they really did a fantastic job with it i would say that if if you hate downtime then this is a good game for you yeah because if you play with the simultaneous stuff i mean you, you you're not you cannot just sit there you're not bored because mm -hmm. you're you're constantly going through your stuff and yeah <clears throat> and looking to see when to take advantage of them and sometimes strategy wise you may want to cancel them out uh, so that or ha try to get them to cancel to overdo you so you can have the first dibs on another card that comes out you know it's mm -hmm. like there's even a little bit of that underlying uh yeah strategy 
Yeah, because one thing, actually, sorry, you don't actually draw five cards. You draw six, six. and you make yep. your opponent discard one. And you're like, get rid of this one so you know for a fact they're not doing a particular action. And that also goes into play on how you might want the deck build. If you want those cards that allow you to search like where locations might be, like do process of elimination, you're buying a lot of those. So your opponent eventually has to give you one of those cards, but it could be one of the two. And it's like, it's that ability and you get a money. And you might already have a bunch of money. So you're like, ugh, <laughs> like, okay, that's all I'm doing is so it it just it just works. And it shouldn't, but it does. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, that's my number nine, Philosophia Floating World, our first oh. crossover. Yep. All right. So my number nine is one. I don't know if it'll be a crossover for you or not. Um, I didn't count this one on my crossovers, but um it's a you. It's a, an AEG game. It's uh, dice drafting. It is a race game. It has a really stupid cover art. And that oh. is two <laughs> I was sitting there and I'm like, AEG <laughs> race game? What are you talking about? No, yeah. that was my number 18. Okay. I um, really like this game, though. Like I said, I had about 30 that I considered. Um, and... This was initially like, I was like, oh, for sure, for sure, it's going to be mm -hmm. my top 10. And no, no, it just kept getting pushed back more and more. It, well, and this game could have easily have not even been close on this because what, what they did, and I know I'm jumping a little bit ahead on what I'm talking about, but I think the most important thing they did with this game is give you a stack of different cards for each of the dice. Yeah. So the replayability and the variation of the dice abilities are so different. Yeah. That, I mean, because if they would have just done like two or three cards, then it would have gotten stale pretty fast. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know how many cards, seven, eight cards per color, I think. <clears throat> but there's um, a lot. Yeah. I remember I did the I did a run through for this one. And as we were discussing it, I pulled out the rest. of, mm -hmm. And my friend Brett was like, oh, there's that many. And I'm like, yeah, there's a lot for each color. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean it's John DeClaire, yeah. like he's he's the card guy for AEG. Right. Yeah, yeah, and and it's just it's a unique game because uh, you you have these dice. They have all these. They're all different faces and different abilities and stuff. But you pick a card for each color, and that's what that dice will be. It has these kind of annoying dice trays and boxes. They're awful. Yeah, you know, <laughs> like, that, I'm not going to talk it for it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it uh, it and the, and it, it doesn't look like much because when you put the game board out there, it's just a small board, mm. you know, and everything like that. But damn, if it's not fun as hell when you're trying to move your stupid ass little wooden <laughs> cube, cube animals or whatever the hell around yeah. and. Uh, you know, there you, where you land on throughout there. There's different things you can get. Um, the further your, your, I think it's the fan track, I believe, or your fame track or whatever it goes, you can get more benefits. Yeah, you go and stuff. And yeah, the ketchup mechanic is similar yeah. kind of to the rat tails and quacks. Right, right, and and you know, it's it's just a solid ass game for being such a simplistic looking thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, the other thing and. Probably the trickiest part of the game <clears throat> is, you know, you have your dashboard for your dice mm -hmm. and you can only roll a certain number of dice. Yeah. So when you're rolling these dice, there's this push your luck mechanic of it um, uh, hitting this deal where you lose your stuff, you know, and and, and uh, so you are choosing these dice so that you can uh, either use them for moving or the other abilities. And then the dice you don't use will stay right there. So you kind of have to, yeah. um, you know, your your deck your your deck building or pool building or whatever. So you're moving dice from different places, and then you can pull a certain number of dice back over to there, depending on mm -hmm. your level and stuff. I mean, there's that's the trickiest part is just knowing teaching people how to move the dice from sector yeah, to sector. Because <laughs> I think also your push your luck is. If you roll blanks on your first, like, mm -hmm. then you you don't bust. You get a you get like another chance. And mm -hmm. then if you if you roll symbols and then you keep those, 
that's whenever you can actually bust if you right, if you right. don't roll one symbol <laughs> and uh and that was very weird because normally yeah it's like uh you usually just like can bust immediately but um but no you can uh you can keep trying and you buy dice potentially that just have mm-hmm. symbols they do nothing for you except have a face like on it i think there's right. one card it's like a green card it's like the rock star and it's like, nope, he doesn't do anything for you. He just has a bunch of faith symbols that allow you to kind of keep pushing your luck. This one's so much fun because you can pay, you can save up your money to buy mm-hmm. like the really good one. There's like a dinosaur that if you roll it, lets you move five. And I know in the run through, Kat had like four of those dice. And I'm like, oh my God. And she like ran like 15 spots one time. It was like, I think she was one space away from the finish line and I was able to just edge her out. Uh, but I was like, Oh my kiss it's luck that I think that, yeah. that die in particular has one face it has. Them on it. And that's what I was going to say. A lot of the dice just have one face and yeah. that's it. Like those, your starting pool of the, of the dice all mm-hmm. just have like one face on them, I think. And, yeah. and it's just like, it's, it's rough, you know? And uh, cause you get a big die too. Um, yes yeah if you're first player or something right um so you know it's one of those it it's a light-hearted game you Mm -hmm. know don't do it too don't go into it too serious it's yeah to me this fits literally look at the box art (laughs) yeah it fits like the camel up the people that like camel up this would be like another step up from that because you're drafting dice and i haven't played camel up so i don't know it's really Uh, simple betting game but it's a race style too yeah, this game falls into the same issue that I think Downforce does in that I feel like there were, there were actually two little maps. Mm-hmm. Like, they gave you a bunch of different, like, racers, which is awesome. Like, uh, but I would love to see a map expansion. And I know there's different ways to play. There's actually, you can do, like, a Grand Prix, and they have different styles in the back of the rule book of how do you want to play this game? And then it gives you a list of, you know, the characters to play as, which is awesome. That definitely helps a lot. But in a racing game, you got to have a bunch of maps. And yeah. I think there's, there's, I think there's, there's four. There's four, ma- there's two boards, double-sided. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and those are good. Like four maps is definitely great for a base game. They could have easily just done, doesn't Downforce only have one, like one or two in the base game? It has two and then each of the map packs brings in two more. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, a Cubitos Mac Mac pack <laughs> Mac pack <laughs> would be would be awesome. But the, yeah, this one this one's super fun. Like I said, like thirty games even considered is is a lot of games, especially if you don't do this kind of stuff for a living. Like, uh, and for it to be even even considered because I I can see this not being like I don't see anyone talking about this game. It's still pretty hot. I mean, people, as soon as people put it up for sale or anything, people jump on it like crazy. Yeah, they do. Well, that's good. Yeah. <clears throat> that is good. All right. My number eight uh, may or may not be on your list. I don't know if you considered it. I don't know if you've even played, played it since its release. Um, but I'm hoping you got a chance to play it because we actually got to play it in beta all those years ago and now it's finally being i have uh, released you have gotten to play it yep, all right I, well, so I, played, it, I played i played it last weekend oh okay perfect so Amy, Amy it'll most likely be on your list if i had to guess but that is <laughs> role player <laughs> adventures why it's like it's, like, it's some other game <laughs> <laughs> you're just like wait a minute what yeah we we play the beta no yeah role player adventures uh is is one that was highly anticipated um, because both you and I love role player and both of its expansions. I started this as a series. Actually, real quick, I have done a run through for every game on this list. So uh, for me, 11 through one is on my channel. So if you definitely want to go check out the videos, please do. That would be awesome. Uh, but you don't have to. Um, that was one thing I really try to do when I do these 2021s. I like to have the run through up, but, um, anyway, role player adventures has been actually on my channel three different times. You and I did the beta and then they sent me a prototype whenever it was on Kickstarter, which was awesome of them. That was really, really cool. Um, and then now it's on officially. And I will say 
the first the first mission the battle at the black lake is the same like they never they didn't modify it from our game they didn't modify it from whenever i got the prototype so it's very very similar uh but this was yeah well i mean (laughs) the prototype looked pretty yeah very very similar um this is a heavy heavy box like you have 10 12 12 adventures I don't know. They're I big old say, books, though. Um, and <laughs> the beginning, like the first adventure, they're all kind of broken up into their own adventure, but they do connect. There is an overall campaign. What you decide to do will dictate keywords that you have that will affect the individual adventures, but it will modify your standing with three different factions. So this is kind of like the equivalent of a module in D&D. And this was the perfect step for them to take with role player. Base role player, you're just making the character. Then you're like, all right, what the hell do I do with it now? Monsters and minions, you actually go fight and build up to a final boss. Fiends and familiars give you a familiar and uh, just a different uh, set of dice and way of drafting dice. All incorporating into building an awesome character. And then this one, you get to take those characters uh, and then go on an adventure with them. And they have a really neat system for how you modify it. It balances well. If you do really well, like, because whenever I started the series, my friend Keith and I, um, not Keith Majeka, um, another different, different type of Keith. But we actually played role player to build the characters out. And that's how we're able to role play and make decisions um but you have to make decisions as a group you don't get to be like oh it's my character i'm gonna do this no you have to come to some sort of consensus when deciding where to go and what to do but yeah the the integration of those role player characters are awesome because it's not a matter of who wins in regular role player if one person does really well another person does poorly like you're both going to be handy in some way, unless you really just shit the bed and get zero points in role player, then I'm just going to give you a pre-built character. It'd be like Chad that one time we played a role player and he went, he bought every like sniveling, like those trait cards that were made the, his person is whore, like the worst <laughs> human being in the world. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, and what's very weird because when you play role player, obviously it's a competitive game. But when you're playing it to make the characters, you kind of turn it cooperative because like items come out and like there was one where it's like, like my friend is playing like a, a warlord and there was like a war hammer and he's like, oh, I want that. And it's like, OK, yeah, obviously I'm not going to buy it like I want you to have it. So and I'm kind of the rogue. But the adventures on this are are awesome. Like they they get more and more decision making based off of the as the adventures go on the first one is very very kind of standard it's more like your tutorial and then even the second one just kind of opens up immediately to what you can do the combination of items to how you interact with the locations is very smart um like i one of the things that we came across um my friend keith was like oh what if we went and did that with these items and i'm like I didn't even think of that. Let's go give it a shot. And it worked. Uh, I think they've opened up the door drastically. I think that they are probably done with expansions for role player and they're only going to focus on adventures. That would be my guess. Yeah. Um, And I'd be fine with that. I honestly think role player, it's pretty much done everything it can do. I can't think of anything else for what you would build a character as. Right. Um, so yeah, adventures like role player destinies, they might try to like, I think that's probably the route they're going to take. At least that's the route I hope they take because they, they got a bread and butter game right here. Yep. I think you're right. All right. So we'll see if that's on my list here in a little bit. We'll see (laughs) here in a little bit. Number one. (laughs) All right. So my number eight is a game that, uh, I know you haven't played. I We were going to at one point, never got a chance to. It's in a universe of a game that we both enjoy. Um, and this one, uh, you get to play as the bad people again. Um, and that is Shadow Kingdoms oh, okay. of Valeria. <clears throat> um, this That's one... Right. 
Fuck, turns. I totally forgot to have you bring that last time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this one turns um, – you know, there's, there's several games in Valeria, you know, and my favorite being the Card Kingdoms of Valeria. Um, but this one – turns uh it's it's actually like a uh a worker placement um kind of like a pool building game um and what you are is you are a they they call you a i think it's a warden they call you a warden and you you're for the evil side because what the theme is is you know the people of valeria have taken over your land and have built all their awesome stuff there and you're pissed off and you're hungry to get your land back so so you're trying to build up an army and go and take it back so the competitive version of this is every player plays a warden that is trying to build up the most powerful army of monsters and they're going to go and try to take back their land um so pretty much what you do is you're going to when it's your turn you're going to place your warden in um in a worker placement area um there's different sh- i guess there's shrines uh and different shrine areas uh you'll gain dice that goes into onto your player board that you'll use for when you're fulfilling contracts or whatever um but there's there's five different types and i have it pulled up that there's green dice or goblins red or orcs white or skeletons purple or gargoyles and brown are gnolls G N O L L. Uh, so yeah, what other, like, what else would they like? Yeah, yeah. So, like, so I'm, you know, and it's it's unique because you, again, you get to play the bad guys, and I kind of fall into that thing where playing the the bad guys is something I like, you know, with like village attacks, and mm-hmm. we talked about Masters of the Night earlier than yep. this and stuff. So, um, it just kind of takes that in that universe, and you get the the other side. Uh, of it um but uh you know whoever ends up with the most victory points ends up being like the general of the evil army that gets to go on so i don't know where they're going to go from here um i don't know it, this it's seems like it's gonna... almost probably a one-off yeah and uh there was an expansion for it and i can't remember what it was i have it and i haven't used it but uh um rise of titans Yes. So I don't know if that what that does necessarily. I haven't uh haven't messed with it. But um but anyway, this was uh one that I kind of picked up. I missed the Kickstarter because uh, there was some interesting Kickstarter stuff that came with it. But uh but yeah, you know, this is just a good one. I like worker placement and it has the interesting theme on it. It has Miko art, which I like and yeah i mean i was about to say the art is phenomenal for this because uh he makes grotesque looking art and that works for monsters <laughs> he has very yeah. sharp art that's what i'm noticing it's like every like bad. everything's pointy yep. so like pointy eyes pointy you know ears pointy nose face boobs waist it, like they're hu- his humans are the ugliest fucking abominations <laughs> so i honestly thought that this was a game about the humans because i can't tell the difference whether oh. these are monsters or his people <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah so this is this is a good one i mean if you like games like card kings of valeria or if you like games in this universe um they seem to have a different all the games in valeria seem to be different core mechanics you know mm-hmm. um from the card kingdoms being like the machi koro dice rolling gaining stuff and then there's i think there's uh margraves of valeria that does something and there's just all these different games that take place in valeria that do different stuff Mm -hmm. so but uh but yeah this is a good one to try out for sure and it's it's relatively cheap too sweet yeah i have not played this one i kept i forgot that this was one that i wanted to try all right, my number seven, <clears throat> I feel I have not seen anyone talk about, and 
I even double checked like to, I was like maybe it didn't come out in 2021 but no it did like at least in, in on board game geek it does say 2021 and I feel like I did get it maybe way early this year and it's a another story driven game uh, where you, the choices you make will kind of dictate how the story goes individual stories so you don't have it's not like a campaign game by any means. I know I just have the base game and this is also a very heavy box with uh, spiral bound stories and uh, and set in a in a theme that is never I've never seen it touched on and it is Solomon Kane. So this one was one that I backed. I mean, God, like this was years ago when I felt at least it feels like it was, yeah. and it just kept getting pushed back more and more and more. And I know they had a lot of people working on the writing. And even then, true to Mythic Games form, they had a bunch of erratas that you had to look up. Because I remember playing one mission and I'm like, what? well, these guys aren't doing anything. And I had to look it up and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, that's that's how it's supposed to be worded. Once you get past that, this game is extremely solid. Very, uh, like, very well-crafted work, uh, not work replacement, cooperative game where every person plays as one of the uh uh she it it's there's the what are they called virtues um i'm like what are they all what are they because it's like you have the seven deadly sins and then there's like the seven virtues but you play as four of them uh courage prudence temperance and justice and each of those has special powers that are on their da- uh, dice board as well as cards that they can play but you are kind it's very weird it's a very weird constructed game because the virtues are what dictate what solomon kane can do so he is his own piece on the board no one actually plays solomon kane but you if normally he's very he's very bullheaded like oh there's a bad guy i want to run up and stab him or something or beat him up but you as the virtues have to kind of corral him to do different things or talk to him in a certain way and the choices that you end up doing will dictate, like I said, how the story goes. And I love that in board games. I love it in video games too. Just choice-based games are probably some of my absolute favorite. And uh, you utilize your actions by rolling dice and then placing certain dice values on your actions. And then you can send those to other players so they can have it as an extra die on their turn if they need a particular die face. Um, it's, it's very like, it's a very tight knit game. And like I said, it's weird because you have to spend dice to get Solomon Kane to move and you do all this work, like, like cooperating with your players to have him move like one space. And so it's, it's, it's really odd. Uh, but it's kind of like, it has the same almost initial feel of spirit Island where, you, you want to order things in a particular way and, and you can't do everything yourself. You're just one of the four virtues. So like one virtue can is really good at having him talk, but he can't really move a lot. There's another one that lets him move and one, another one that lets him fight. So you need everyone to be efficient. And uh, I remember I tried this out at Gen Con one year, the prototype. And then once I got it, I was very pleased with how it works. The miniatures for it are very well done. The virtues are super big and bulky. Um, And I know there are two more, I think there's two more expansions. Well, sorry, there's two big box expansions that should be coming out. I lied, there's a lot more. There's Against the Vampires, New World, Castle of the Devil, Heart of Africa, and Red Shadows. And I have the Right Hand of Doom that came out uh, uh, this year. And I've actually played that one, which is pretty interesting. But yeah, lots of different endings to, to the stories, uh, paths to take. It's, it's an extremely solid one. Uh, oh, interesting. Most people are saying it's best at one. Yeah, that's what uh, I've seen it as the, in the top two or three on a lot of solo lists. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I would not have thought that. I would not have thought it's best at one. I know they have different modes you can play. Like there's like the darkness. One player can play as the darkness and another one can play as... Well, there's another type of virtue, like the high, overarching virtue. But yeah, 
it, this is a theme that is just done that no one I've never seen it. I've never seen it. So I know there was a horrible movie that <laughs> was made like <laughs> in the early 2000s. So yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a really good one. Very much like <laughs> it. Love the story. It's written very well. So it's just, of course, it's held back a little bit by the erratas that you might have to look up. So if you're ever playing the game and you're like, well, this guy isn't doing anything or this feels weird, just look it up. It's probably an errata on their website. At least you can find it. And it's not just on a forum somewhere. Like it's on their website. Maybe they'll do a errata pack like they did for Reich Busters. Who knows? But yeah, that's my number seven, Solomon Kane. That's one I'd like to try sometime just to see. If I think would you would really like it. Uh, I don't know if there's different solo rules. Maybe that's why people are liking it. Because if I had to guess, you just control the four virtues. Probably. And that um that might be a little bit a little much or maybe not i don't know i like the interaction and working with other players <laughs> i've played it only as a three-player game and i there's always four virtues so like one person would, would like control two and then the other people control one right. but and it works perfectly fine so i'm i was surprised that people were saying it's best at one interesting yeah all right so my number seven is a game that was on my top 100 list for years and years and I play tested for this game for almost since the inception of the game and then uh, it went out and they just came out with a second edition this year oh okay including second editions I see well it, it's a it is a pretty much a different game uh, is it? Um, is it? <laughs> so definitely a better game I can tell you that much yeah, so Summoner Wars Second Edition I put on here because, um, as much as I love the first edition and I still always will, this one does turn it into a better experience, even though I don't care for the art as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, they did a lot of reworking with this to make it um, just a little bit more enjoyable in the on the table. You know, they made they turned the D six dice rolls into where they hit more often they Mm -hmm. increase the hit points of the characters but they hit more often the dice they weren't as punishing yeah Um, because they originally were just uh, you know d6s and you had to hit on a three or four or higher or whatever Mm -hmm. this is all symbol based for ranged and for you know uh melee and all that stuff yeah um pretty much the theme of this is that you're taking each of you pick a faction and you have a summoner and you go until you kill the other summoner i mean that's really the theme of it for all intents yeah. and purposes i mean it's a skirmish game <laughs> right and those um, typically never work for me like i can think of one which is mythic battles mm-hmm. and then i was like well actually summoner wars that is a skirmish game and right. yeah it's really good yeah and i think they because this is one of those games you know when it came out several years ago initially i want to say 2012 2010 something like that was when the first one came out maybe but um it was it was unique because your cards moved around on the grid kind of like miniatures you know Mm -hmm. Uh, so there was a lot of cool stuff with that but then i think it started outgrowing itself a little bit so when they redid this they retuned the decks they changed some of the mechanics they changed the uh the um not the turn order the uh phases phases that's what i was looking for phase order because And the other one, you know, some of the event cards you played were just super powerful. And in this one, they kind of changed the phase of it. So they kind of adjusted that up because, I mean, there were cards in the first edition you'd play. It was Magic Drain and you just take two magic from you. You play it and just take two magic from your opponent, you know? Yeah. Um, Also, a strategy in the first edition was you could just kill your own weak units to get to increase your power, you know? So uh, and that's not any of this game anymore. Uh, you know, and they got rid of the big walls that were nine hit points because unless you were the guild dwarves, you weren't going to be able to take those walls down very easily. Um, mm-hmm. Now they've gotten rid of the walls altogether and they've created portals, which are less yeah. hit points. So they make it more of a viable deal. Plus, you can actually put the portals on the other side, other yep. team side now where you couldn't cross with your walls in the first edition, the middle part of the board. Yeah, um, you got to get your summoner over there, but that's right, huge so, if you can pop a portal on the opponent's side. Mm-hmm. 
So, um, and then, you know, they just came out with their first, like the little starter set expansion for the Phoenix elves and Tundra orcs. Um, yep. I haven't got a chance yep. to do those two yet, but, uh, I have, oh yeah. Um, yep. are the Phoenix elves as, as annoying as they were in the first one? Or do well, you I, I, I was hoping you had played it because I remember you hated the Phoenix elves and I mm. hated some of the wars first edition. So I right. never, I didn't play them. Um, <clears throat> someone mentioned on on my on my review of it that it, it felt completely unbalanced in those two fighting each other i thought the tundra orcs were were really bad specifically against um the phoenix elves the phoenix elves are so fast like they're mm -hmm. so fast high damage they're like a burn deck in magic is what they right. felt like um Lots of ways to just quickly destroy the Tundra Orcs small, um, like small factions. Um, I'm looking up the the. Uh, well, uh, while you're looking at, it, I can tell you right now, the first edition, the Tundra Orcs were super strong. They had a lot they? of hit points. Were super strong, and the Phoenix Elves. The part, the reason that I hated the Phoenix Elves is because they did direct damage without rolling dice. Like you could yeah, be like, they, oh, well, they I'm still do, they still do that. I don't see, and that's. That pisses me off. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so uh, I'm okay. So comments. Uh, so one guy mentioned because I I I I swapped it whenever I did this review, and I remember talking about it in the first actual discussion for Summoner Wars. Spoiler alert: This is not on my list. Uh, I didn't consider it because it was a second edition. But you're right; it does change quite dramatically. I actually really like this game. Um, so someone mentioned, yeah, that everyone gets more at more health and more attack. Uh, that was that was just my bad. Um, but someone did say, I will say, in the League of Summoner Wars, uh, Phoenix Elves versus Tundra Orcs was played fifty-two times, with the record being twenty-seven to twenty-five. So pretty close. So it is yeah. really close. I guess I uh, just uh, hate the Tundra Orcs. I did not well, like how they played. And and that's that's the beauty of this game. And with all the play testing I did for them over the years, it's like there's going to be facts. There's so many they they vary so much that there's going to be some that just don't fit the, your style. Like mm -hmm. on, of all the factions that came out in that first edition, there were some that I just did not want to play because I could not get them. But yet people were railing with them, you know, on leagues and stuff. It just it just fits playing styles, you know. But. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, Phoenix um, Elves were really good, though. I I did like them, but I also uh -huh. like burn decks and magic. If their if their summoner is still Prince Elian, I'm gonna rip the card. It in is. Half. <laughs> it is not. Okay. It good. is. It's some lady. <laughs> I don't remember her name. Um, but but yeah, that little bastard. Because yeah. the Tundra Orcs like were they were they had like really cheap minions that could come out and uh you could they, you could, like damage them to have them immediately activate they also had really cheap like buff like troll kind of characters um and then hell even the summoner has really high health but like he he can remove like he can he can help characters re-roll is was so if he attacks then he can put um a counter on himself and then he can re-roll dice gotcha uh but because your game loses, if your summoner dies, then having him out, just the Phoenix Elves could just ping him for like, mm -hmm. and then the, like the Phoenix Elves have like some mage archers that like any amount of damage they take is reduced to one, but they only have two health. So they're the best blockers in the world. Yep. <laughs> and uh, they had, it, there was actually a, a unit in their first edition that did that same thing. They yeah. were guardians, and they would take one damage. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I will say, in uh, whenever my friend and I, whenever we played it, Phoenix Elves won every time. But there was a a battle where I could have won with the Tundra Orcs, but I I misplayed. And oh boy, when you realize when you misplay in a game like this, it's it's very like demoralizing. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, I'm very excited uh, for what they do with this. I think that the second edition, I hate it first edition for its dice alone and this one yeah if you miss it's very rare in every game i've played maybe each of us have missed like once right yep so anyway uh second edition summoner wars my number seven good deal all right my number six is a game i know you 
probably haven't even heard of. And it is a it's a it's a fever dream of an idea that it should even work because this genre of game only ever really works if you have like six or more players. But this game is uh, designed for two or three and it gives you that exact same feel. This got like a 10 out of 10 from me and then like nines from the other players because just the experience was so well done. Uh, and that is Mantis Falls. Interesting. Uh, it's a game of trust and it says like, uh, well, like life, a cooperative game that's only really cooperative sometimes. This is a trader game for two or three players uh, where you... Uh, the theme is you are a witness that has witnessed some vague mon like monstrosity, someone getting killed, and the mob is coming after you, and you meet someone at a diner, and that person may be another witness that you're both trying to get out of the town, or maybe the assassin killed that witness, and now the assassin is the one traveling with you, but it's completely card driven in what you're trying to do, how fast you're able to move, um, what actions you're trying to take, how you're trying to weed out the other player on if they're, uh, you know, the traitor or not. Um, because you lose if, you know, a witness, uh, like if basically if, if all witnesses don't escape, then uh, the witnesses lose uh, or if the assassin um, kills everyone mm -hmm. so you can go to certain cards that have like a payphone and play a card that you call in like a strike you call in like a favor to basically just outright kill someone and if they come turn out to be the witness then you've just lost but if you're the assassin and it's just it but you're, you're trying to play your cards right because there's ways whenever you take all your damage you have like a last life effort to heal yourself um, but you can only do that so many times before you eventually your body just gives out. Man, like, like the resistance, for example, is a great like deduction trader experience if you have seven or more players. Um, this gave me that exact same stressful feeling that resident uh, res what that resistance gave, but with three players. So. I, I, I had to put this way high on the list just because like it, it was so good and it shouldn't work. Like this is a, this is a theme that begs for more players and they were able to do it in less time. So, because the card play is really good, how you deal damage, like you may not even want to attack each other, but the way that the events are coming out, it's just like, all right, well, I can't really talk about this, but you want to help me deal with it because it's going to affect both of us, but you may be lying. You could be the assassin and being like, and make that player burn a bunch of cards, like, you know, a gun with a bunch of bullet cards and be like, okay, whew, we got rid of that, but it was face down. So they didn't know. Um, but there's ways to obviously call people on their bluffs. They could be like, oh, okay, man, this is going to do a lot of damage just to, just to you, but um, I can help you out a little bit if you want to spend like a lot of your cards and they could play a card that's like, okay, I want to see that, you know, if it's face down and then they can look at it and it's just like, oh, no effect. Hmm. All right. <laughs> well, you lied to me. It, the theme is good. They have their own soundtrack for it. That's a very awesome ambiance that I did not get copyright claimed for on my channel because I played it. It was, I was just flabbergasted by how well it worked. So much fun. So if you like social deduction and trader mechanic games, but you don't have eight other friends like to play the game with you, definitely get Mantis Falls because like you just need one other person. And if you can't get another person, then I guess just don't play it. Like don't <laughs> find another You're friend. <laughs> You're the bad guy. <laughs> so yeah, that's my number six, Mantis Falls. Awesome. I've never heard of that one. Yeah, I can't imagine a lot of people did. I backed it on its idea alone and was very well surprised by how well it was. Awesome. All right. So my number six is a game that just squeaked in for the uh, 21 because I think I got it like in January of 2020. Mm. So it was one of those that popped in late. Um, 
and it is a big box um, game that turns a 1v1 game into a cooperative ex dungeon crawl experience. And that is Dice oh, Game Adventures. Haven't played it yet. Yeah, this one, um, I love Dice Throne, or Dice Throne um, but not having anybody in the house that likes to play those kind of games, this was like a heavenly Kickstarter for me because yeah. you can play it solo uh, with multiple characters. You get to pick, you get to use all your fancy characters from all the season one and season two. Um, and I, I even got the pre-painted minis, which I think you may have too. I think um, I have them too. And I said, it makes it even look cooler on the, on there, but pretty much it's just, you know, you're just doing a dungeon crawl. You're gaining treasure. You're gaining um, upgrades. You, the, the cool thing about this is it's like it's an, a campaign and you actually gain cards that go into your deck. So your deck oh, changes neat. throughout the campaign. So, so you know, you get these cool power ups and stuff and everything. And you need them because by the time you get to the to the Mad King, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I haven't beat him. I mean, I Dang. can get to him and he he's just disgusting but but he, um, there's there's more than just him though right aren't there like yeah four, you have several four... boss battles as you go up oh, okay to him yes um <clears throat> and you know so you you gain your um your gold and stuff that you you stop with this shopkeeper i can't uh i think i have her here rosella is the shopkeeper's name and you can buy you know your upgrades and stuff like that um you're exploring through a tile. It's a tile flip uh, dungeon as okay. you're going through and everything. It's, you know, it's, it, it just looks neat, especially if you have the miniatures, the pre-painted mm -hmm. miniatures. It just looks awesome. And you have your dashboard set up there that you're still rolling your dice. The exact, you're, you're playing dice throne, but as a cooperative experience going up against awesome. and stuff. So, I mean, it's, it just makes it, 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 it turns it into a game that I can get to the table and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, the storage inside the box is really cool because they uses the, I mean, you know, the season one and season two having their own individual trays are so nice the way it's yeah. stored in that. And this this big box does the same thing with the tiles and tokens and all that stuff. So, um, so yeah, I mean, this one had to go on the list. Uh, Dice Throne Adventures. It's a, awesome. It's a good one. Yeah, this one definitely probably would have been on my list had i played it uh but i didn't even realize it was 2021 and just barely, uh, <laughs> just barely. yeah i know it was on the few... Re retail it was definitely 21 but... okay <clears throat> but yeah i'm currently doing a dice throne tournament so i was waiting to finish that before i started the dice throne adventures campaign so I, that's just why i never played it it's literally on my shelf with mm -hmm. my dice throne stuff so all right, good deal. Well, that's good to know that it's awesome. <clears throat> okay. My number five is probably one of... Uh, this was the one of the games that I actually saw the more... Not necessarily controversy, but the more uh, disagreements between people on whether or not it was a good game or not. Uh, and obviously, it's number five on my list. I think it's a phenomenal game. So far, it could tank because it's a massive campaign game. But... Uh, while overpriced, I think that the experience has been like really exquisite. So that is Descent, Legends of the Dark, Act One, apparently. But yeah, this was another one that completely flipped for me because I don't like Descent Journeys in the Dark or Descent Second Edition is I think what most people call it. I I never, to be fair, I never tried it as a cooperative with the app. I had only ever played it as the overlord versus everyone else. Thought it was wickedly unbalanced and just did not enjoy it at all. Uh, but this one is really nothing like that version. Like, so this one is very much app driven, like quite a bit in such a way that you need an actual, either an iPad or a laptop. And I use a laptop because I, I do a OBS to record the actual app when we're playing. But yeah, there's a lot going on in, in this game whenever you, you're utilizing the app because it feels like a video game, but they balanced it so well that it's not a video game. Like there were a few games that we played this year that 
that were so app driven you didn't even have to mess with the board in any way it's just like <laughs> okay <I'll> just, <laughs> oh is that it is that what it's called um yeah you, if you're well if, if you're playing solo then yeah you just boop just mess with play with it it's an app phone or it's an app phone it's an app game this one is not like that like you are in interacting with the like with the app quite a bit but you are still using all your stuff your character stuff and uh deciding how you want to move on the board how you want to attack what cards you want to use how you want to flip them because each card is double-sided to be able to give you a different ability uh it's like your items for example if you're the elf you have a bow and on the other side are your swords uh so those have different types of attack different abilities that you might want to use to fatigue them uh you you put fatigue on these cards, which is a neat way of representing your character getting tired. So then you have to spend an action to flip them. Uh, I just really like the intricacies of this game and it looks awesome on the table. Like, yeah, you pay 150, 170 bucks for cardboard, but really you're probably paying all that money towards the app, like to help them like develop it, I guess. Well, and but, we've, dis we've discussed this before. I, I hope, that when the next act comes out mm -hmm. that it you know since they already have the app the uh app uh, made yeah that it'll only be like a 60 dollar expansion just more cardboard and stuff like that you know yeah yeah that's true we'll see uh i don't know what plans they have for i mean they have a you know top, bottom right act one so like you would imagine they're doing going to be doing more um so we'll see unless they're just really trying to cash grab and grab as much money so i don't know if that's a justifiable price for you for one game probably not but i i paid it and i'm having a blast with it all the characters are unique play radically different the really the the uh, most amazing thing this is easily the best app that they have because it manages all your resources and when you go to town you just have those available. So like a video game, you go in and go to the shop and there's your money. Whenever you upgrade your weapons, like, or like if you modify and craft weapons, then you go to the area to modify your weapons. It actually will change your weapon. Like it'll look different on the, on the app. And then it's like percentile kind of things. Oh, 30% chance to do, you know, double damage. And whenever you attack and it goes off, it tells you, oh, hey, here's the iron, the ruby iron pommel. Like that's it, it, it activated. And so you're like, yay. It manages all that minutia of, of a game that in games past would just be very, very fiddly. And it, it manages all that. And you still get to play the game. Um, so far, every mission that i have been on has been unique and interesting one of them reminded me of dragon age whenever you go to like the the fade i think is what it was called where one of your like the elf's personal one of his quests he had to like rest and he went to like a dream area so he was on his own kind of board and the other players had to protect him from monsters that were attacking uh it's just been really innovative and a really cool system that I've thoroughly enjoyed. So I, I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, there's not really any voice acting and I really wish there was. Like they kind of say dumb one-liners every now and then. We do it, we did it team, stuff like that. Like take down the bad guy. Um, it's just, uh, I mean, that's just kind of one gripe with the app. Uh, but other than that, yeah, it's the music's good, ambiance is great, app is amazing, game's great, it's 3D terrain, looks sexy as hell. Like it's it's a very solid campaign game. So that's my number five, Descent yeah. Legends of the Dark. One other thing I'll add is it's neat the stuff you can do you how you can interact with the terrain, you know, like mm -hmm. you go up to the tree and you can hey, I'm gonna climb the tree. Yeah, or, or you know, stuff like that. And you you get may get stuff, you may not get stuff, you know, it's just it's They've really put a lot of mm -hmm. um, uniqueness into it. Yeah. I mean, even one of the missions, the latest one I did, had a puzzle in it. Uh, not the greatest puzzle, unless we very much missed a key element. We had to, like, 
kind of guess halfway through and then we eventually got through it but so that was frustrating but at least they are incorporating puzzles into mm-hmm. it um i don't know how long the campaign is what they need to start doing you know how there's a website like how long to beat uh for like video games you can look right. it up and it's like oh six hours if you just do the main story they need to start doing that for campaign board games it's like tainted grail how long to beat 20 hours if you just play it you know right right but oh yeah. well it's yeah. it's super fun right now yep it's a good one for sure all right so my number five has already been talked about oh okay is it uh role player adventures it is yay um and this one's mainly on here i haven't played a ton of it but i've played enough of it i played the first two missions um okay but because that's what Amy and I were did this this uh, last weekend. But um, I just know. I mean, I love role player. It's I mm-hmm. don't know where it landed on my top 100 this year. We haven't gotten that far, but I know it's it's up there. It always it has been the last several years. Um, and that was always the thing with it. You know, I you always yearned for more. You play the your base game. You're like, okay, so game's over. I built this character. So then they added the monsters and minions. Oh, I can actually fight a little something and use my character to do something. And then they threw in the, the friend, the fiends and familiars, you know, a little bit more. And then it was just like, you always heard this rumor. It's like, man, I wish they could come out with something that you could take it, you know? And then they come out with this and it's like, bam, it's awesome. You know, you can create anybody you want and you can uh, go out on these adventures and stuff. So, I mean, there isn't much more to say that you, didn't say i mean you know this is the vein that they need to take this ip now and and just keep throwing more stuff at it um i haven't even messed with the expansion box i don't even know what the heck it adds if it's just more you can you can actually just no just go ahead and incorporate that it's it's a big fucking thing of backstory so it it gives if like your backstory for your character it is it gives you three potential um interactions at certain on certain adventures to just get more like yeah because it's like a big it was like a big book and i'm like oh my god yeah no it's uh it is a heavy box no it's it's really just more story uh to it um to flesh out like your character a little bit more yeah so i mean and it's just so much crap in this box so much so heavy Mm -hmm. so so much story yeah Um, and it didn't really take them a super long time to develop I don't think Once so they either. announced it, I know they've been working on it for a long time, but like when the Kickstarter came out and from when the time it was delivered, it wasn't mm-hmm. a super long time, you know? Yeah, it was really quick. <clears throat> Mainly because I think they based, I mean, most of it was, they were throwing it onto the role player system too mm-hmm. and everything. So it's just getting the yeah. story and the stuff built. The but. dice system is really interesting because that's <laughs> how you complete like checks and you use... Mm-hmm your own cards based off what you have acquired from building your character and yeah it's really rough they even tell you when you're doing character customization that you're you have to have different colors um so like like my character is really good at dexterity and charisma but if we're not getting any of those skills i'm not that helpful a whole lot so then you kind of try to level your character up so you can have a little bit more kind of at least die control where okay you have two strength i have one we can spend those to get at least we're guaranteed to get a red die yeah it's uh it's it's very very challenging yeah i really enjoy it though and i know it's just Mm going to be a blast for months to come yep (laughs) yep all right my number four i guess i technically lied and said i mean it's not a second edition and it's not a reprint either but it is a it's a re-implementation of a game that came out years ago, but this version came out, of course, in 2021, and that is unfathomable. <laughs> uh, this is basically like, uh, like I said, uh, the kind of previous version was called Battlestar Galactica, made by Fantasy Flight. They lost licensing, and now you can get it and its expansion for like 400 bucks. This is only seventy dollars, um, and incorporates really the exact same system just a different theme this theme of course works better for me i love cthulhu uh and lovecraftian world um and games uh but if you prefer Battlestar or sci-fi then i guess try the base game for that however 
This one is like probably, yeah, this is easily my favorite trader game. Like there's just so much that's going on and a perfect blend of masking like the the trader because a lot of other games is just kind of like very on the nose and when someone does an action it's pretty obvious that they're the trader this one is not that like last time i played this it was a six player game and i was accusing this guy the entire time i convinced everyone to throw him in the brig and he wasn't even i wasn't even the trader like and he wasn't either <laughs> <laughs> but he just made so many shady decisions like because he was the captain and the guy that can control spells don't remember what that character is called but like we had to of course because you have to try and get you're trying to get to boston and you have the location deck so you draw two pick one and the number at the bottom is how far you go and it does the exact same thing as uh you know Battlestar, where at, at a halfway point new loyalty cards get handed out so if there wasn't a trader before there definitely is now and uh but he just kept like doing like ones and twos i know there's threes in there so i'm like all right dude you're really dragging this out so finally got him thrown into the brig and then he had an ability that he could have looked at my loyalty card and the second time around i became the cultist and the cultist is very strange because they are human until the until the boat like reaches i think it's 12 10 or 12 and then the boat has to make one more full trip before the humans win the cultist has to then cause the boat to sink in that final stretch so they have to see boston that's like oh now i'm one of you i'm a hybrid uh so I became a cultist the second time, and then he had an ability where he could look at a person's loyalty card. So I turned to him, and I'm like, hey, hey, man, hey. And he's like, don't talk to me. <laughs> he was so mad. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. I did kind of throw him under the bus. But you get that experience. You get the amazing trader mechanisms. You get the awesome, uh, like, destiny deck that – can kind of throw it in i love the skill checks in this the hybrids are uh it's very clean a very streamlined uh game that is just for me in a better better universe not that the battlestar game was ever bad like it really was like the epitome of the show in in a game it was a perfect blend for that kind of system but yeah this one just obviously does the exact same thing it's just cleaner and if expansions come out you're going to be able to get them and not pay an arm and a leg for it's true so that's my that's my number four unfathomable all right well my number four is another crossover Woo! it is descent it is yeah <laughs> um this I'm like is i one. can't imagine it's anything else hey you're right we did have three yeah and I still think there's another one possibly. So actually, I, maybe. I'm oh, yep. Point. Actually, you you might be right. Um, so uh, Descent is, you know, I I didn't care for the first two um, iterations of it. This one, we had multiple conversations after the announcement of how big of a joke this was for the cost and yeah. stuff like that. But then, you know, you, you get you start hearing the hype and then it's like you look at these online retailers that instead of 180 you can get it for 130 and it's like mm -hmm. that's a little more in my wheelhouse so right. i went ahead and pulled the trigger and that like you said i mean I, there isn't much more i can add to it just the app <clears throat> is awesome you know i play this game solo with two characters yep. um <clears throat> and it's just it's just awesome as hell you know I mean, it's yeah. Um, like Lynn, like we had said just a little bit ago, I hope that not every act is going to be this expensive, but um, we'll see. You know, I mean, I want to say I won't buy it if it's that expensive, but I also said I wasn't going to buy this, and I did. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, I, pr I probably will. Yeah. Like, I mean, the the places <laughs> you can go online, like if it's over a hundred bucks, it's free shipping. So it's like, okay, yeah. well, this will be the only game I buy. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I mean, uh. They they could have easily just been testing the waters for this, but they haven't really supported journeys in, uh, in Middle Earth either. So, I mean, I know well, they came out with like 
Oh no, they have one big box. And I think yeah, they, 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 have, they have two one. big box expansions now. One of them just came out or is just getting ready to come out. That's great. Okay. Um, yeah. But so we'll see. I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> Asmodee was just bought out, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I think some other company yes. bought out Asmodee, or maybe maybe I thought Asmodee was bought. It was. It was okay. for like three million or three billion or mm-hmm. two point seven billion or something like yeah. that. So. so we shall see what happens. I think Fantasy Flight and a few other select uh, publishers are kind of still with them. Yeah. So yep. we'll see what happens. That'll work. All right. My number three is most likely either your number one or it's your, uh, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's the other crossover that we have. Uh, and this is a solo only game that uh, was. Uh, very hyped and easily replaces their initial solo only game. And that is Final Girl. Final Girl is one I got rid of Hosts Negotiator because after playing through the career, which was really good, it really did a fantastic job of kind of doing the, you know, the career of a hostage negotiator. Once I had played it, I was like, okay, yeah, that's that's that game. This game uh, doesn't have a campaign, but has so much more game to it. Still, the core system of using cards and rolling uh, rolling dice to determine how well those cards go off is still there. But you have a lot more decisions to make. You have event decks. You have uh, items. You have special abilities that you have that you can run around dealing with whatever um, map that you're on, whatever a villain uh, or killer that you are uh, you're going up against and whatever final girl you happen to pick it's just going to give you so much variety uh, giving them props for two things one uh, the miniatures tell you what they are on the bottom so they finally someone else finally did it other than yes. uh, Greenbrier games <laughs> so I was very happy with that and the second is their storage system while you have individual boxes uh, so it's not all condensed into one unit yet. The, the, the fact that you have a girl and or a location and a killer that is just magnetized together is brilliant because I mean, and the, and those cases are the, either the killer's mat or the, um, the, the location. I'm like, what the yeah, hell? Yeah. Like, the location. <laughs> and so you just pop those out and then just immediately it's all condensed into a unit and you pull out the, the cards and it's all organized almost immediately. Um, and the play mats just kind of organize it a little bit better. This is so thematic, so much fun. They've included, I think on their website, like a, what happens, like, kind of like a finale of how you die or how you kill it a little story snippet which is really neat they just definitely knew what they wanted to make and they made this a like a better game instead of just kind of a dice chucker and see if you can weirdly talk down the guy from massacring a bunch of people um they just dove real into this and they've already announced the season two which was january 11th yeah, oh, that's coming up. Yep. Which was what was it? Six more? It's at least five more. At least five more is okay. what they're showing. But then that big box storage and all that yep. stuff. Yeah, so five more, which is more locations and then more killers uh, for an even greater combination. It's so much fun. Like hostage negotiator was very frustrating because of the way the dice were there, and because you had you had to put a lot of effort into making that game thematic, like. The way, because like, yeah, I know the cards had little blurbs on them of what you're trying to say, but you, that was kind of lame. So you, you you had to really put a lot, at least I did, to kind of understand why something was happening. But this one, the game really brings that out of you. And the events are just awesome. The different items you can get is really cool. The final, I, I even like the little mechanism of your he- final health, like, is face down and you might have a chance of if you lose all your health to flip it to be like i wasn't actually dead bitch right, <laughs> and right. you like stab him and you're just like ah it it's amazing and uh i'm not a solo gamer like i only do it for the channel and then but this one i was like no I'm, i gotta keep it so yeah that's my number three final girl 
the thing is, is like this fit, this is like a passion project for that AJ and Evan, you know, the designers. Okay. Um, they love horror movies. I mean, every update they were talking about, Hey, what, what, what are we watching? And it was all these horror movies. And oh, stuff. Neat. So, okay. So I think this was just like right down. Yeah. Alley, hundred you know? hundred bucks says one of the new ones is going to be Pennywise. Uh, that would be wise. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, that yeah, we were talking about that last weekend too, and I, I yeah, we were trying to think of who they could use, and like you, you had a really house. cool idea. Yeah, like a cabin in the woods, haunted house yeah. kind of thing. Um, I could see them doing Pennywise. I can see them doing um, Candyman, maybe. Candyman maybe. would be a good one. What's the other one with the Necronomicon? <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, evil dead stuff. evil dead yeah <laughs> like yeah. uh where like the killer is one of your fellow like cabin mates yeah and you they have to include like the stoner he's there the jock like those are events you can get um yeah the events are awesome too because in in my run through i had like i uh, like it was like my girlfriend she was like at the camp uh and I like, and she could actually go into the space with you to help fight. So it was like me and her like beat the shit out of, I, I fought Hans at that time. Uh, Maybe they'll do Chucky. Chucky <laughs> would be a good one. The good one where it's, it's witchcraft and not a robot doll yeah. that has an yeah. on off switch. It's like, why was that made? <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, have, they have a lot of avenues. I I'm, I'm really excited to see what they do. And the fact that they're calling them seasons obviously seems to lead to, oh, hey, season three. Well, hopefully they're big box incorporate. If they're going to do more than this, they need to make sure and have storage yeah. spot for it. No, I Else agree. Piss me off. <laughs> I, yep, I agree with that as well. So my number three is Final Girl. All right. My number three is a game that you didn't really care for a whole lot. Um, but uh, I like the asymmetric um characters that you could play in doing the euro style gameplay and that's merchant's cove mm. um this one uh, was all about uh creating goods um to sell to people that were coming in on boats adventures mm -hmm. that were coming into the cove on boats to uh buy those goods um the hook of this game is that each person controls a diff a character that creates their goods in a specific way to be mm -hmm. able to sell so it's very asymmetric um i don't know the exact names of some of them but like the blacksmith you know he was moving dice around his board to be able to forge weapons there was like the uh the chemist or uh, alchemist that uh was moving they had like the the marbles that were mm -hmm. coming pop falling down kind of like potion explosion style and were and were uh able to make potions that way there was the time warping stuff that you were using there's a yeah. ran there's a dragon rancher there's an innkeeper which so you make your stuff by having adventures going to your like inn and stuff there's mm -hmm. there's all these different characters and all these different things um and uh it has that mechanic where um each i each thing you do costs time so uh if you were the furthest behind in the time track you got it was your turn so the turn order was fluctuating yeah so so if you were three spots behind and you you could do a one a one-time action then it'd be your turn again do another one-time action you know and, mm -hmm. and all which that i stuff. like yeah yeah um so you know it, it, it's one of those games that uh it looks pretty. It takes up a lot of space. Um, the solo play is, is engaging and good. Um, it's one of those. I'm, I'm hoping that the replay value stays up there because um, I've played the blacksmith the most. And in doing so, I mean, I kind of know the track I need to do with the blacksmith to get the stuff. Yeah. So either they need to keep coming out with more characters to keep the base game, to keep the core mechanic game fresh, or it's going to mm -hmm. kind of fade away a little bit. Um, yeah. But for this year, you know, this was one of those ones that kind of hit home for me and was was a fun one. Yeah, this one was like I gave it a six out of ten, which a lot of people think is like garbage, but it's like no, that's, that's slightly above average. Like in terms of asymmetry, like 
the all the characters were cool and definitely had different abilities but you hit the nail on the head which why i i felt like mm-hmm. oh all right i've played this one like because nothing changes based off of who is in the game like if you're talking about asymmetry like root for example you're gonna play your character like yeah you play it differently on how you score points but how you interact with the other players because it's a fighting game will change based off who's actually in the actual game this one wasn't like that you're all just like you you have different ways of going about doing the same thing um which was getting getting goods to sell to the different uh merchants that are coming in so uh, the bones are there. It's it's still like if someone asked me to play it, I would be like, yeah, but I would always want to play a different character. Mm-hmm. Right. And the characters aren't so deep that you're just like, oh, man, I need to figure this one out. Like no. the time travel one. Yeah, he's weird, but he was pretty still pretty straightforward. Uh, so that but that's not to say if people are talking highly of this game, I'm like, right. Fuck that game. Really? No, this one's really good. Uh, just for me, it. I was like, yeah, all right. I don't want to own it. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's just the table presence is cool. You know, like yeah. all your, every person has their own items that they're creating and they have their own little stands. So they're mm-hmm. in standees. So it's kind of neat just seeing, you know, like I had these little shelves that I'd put my stuff on and yeah, and Kat had this little like potion table that she was setting mm-hmm. her stuff on and everything. But they were all the just- same, right? Yeah, it was still like a small, medium, large, yeah, it was Blue, all red, the same yeah. point values yeah. and everything. It was just thematic to your character. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that was the only big difference. I, it's mm-hmm. Everybody's playing the same game. It's just they're creating their things in a different way. Um, yeah. You know, so like I said, it's for it being this snapshot of 2021 from mm-hmm. what I've had to play for it so far, this is definitely a good one. Now, whether it stays relevant, we don't, I don't know, but. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Only Plus time will tell. It's got the Miko art too. Yay! This art, this cover is like amazing. Like <laughs> I can't, I can't tell you enough how much he does everything right except human people. <laughs> like it's like he just doesn't understand this, like the proportions of an actual person. Yeah. All right, my number two, which I for sure thought was going to be my number one, um, but. It, it's not it's number two is one that you've been trying to get a hold of but you just won't don't want to pull the plug which i totally get uh, i wouldn't for the price people are asking for it but is it ah oh, i was so excited when it was announced and i i knew it wasn't being done by steamforge games it was actually being, being done by simon so i had hope there and the game is fantastic and that is bloodborne oh god bloodborne is so so good it is my favorite video game like in terms of playing like legend of zelda obviously i like it's probably my favorite overall world and games in general but like a standalone bloodborne just does everything for me gothic victorian cthulhu challenging as all hell uh to to master uh so whenever they announced this one i was like all right. Well, the Dark Souls game was kind of ass when it came to the actual game. Uh, but this one just does everything for me. I play it solo. Um, and with all the boxes, you basically do play through the uh, the entire core game of the video game. And I know they worked hand in hand with Sony to get licensing and, of course, like story elements to it. Because, like the the they give reasons for every chapter of why you're doing what you're doing and there is an overarching kind of campaign in each uh box or each um yeah each story kind of has three different chapters in it and the core game has four stories so you have 12 games in that uh but really yeah what you do is you just you have a hunter you have a trick weapon that has a unique ability on both sides and how you flip it is um just able to determine kind of how you're going to build your deck. It's a deck builder. And so you'll have three cards. Those cards you either discard to move uh, around the map, to fight. You only have six health, which some enemies can just do four. And then you have to find ways to heal, getting items. It's, it's an extremely solid game. 
I have never played it with anyone else. I've only done it solo. But uh, whenever you are, um, like, the game itself, I think is really, really good. I think it's like an 8 out of 10. If you love Bloodborne, like I do and a lot of other people do, it, it elevates it even more because you're just engrossed in that world. The boss fights are very interesting because it's all card driven. So like what they do is they have cards that dictate kind of how they're doing uh, or what they're going to do. And then you can counter like potentially a card will come out and be like, oh, if you exhaust your firearm, you can stun it and it, it does less damage or whatever it might be. But what's weird is because it, it can seem very boring, I would imagine, on video because you don't move. Like, really, very rarely are you moving unless the, the boss itself, like, actually pushes you away. And to attack it, you have to go into its spot by getting rid of a card. <laughs> but it really is card play back and forth, whereas the Dark Souls board game did have movement. And so the, the Dark Souls uh, game itself, I thought the boss battles were amazing because it dealt with facing of the of the the boss and how you were positioned you dealt more damage you like so you actually had a tactile board that you did so with this you don't so it is a different change of pace because playing it you're very much involved into what's happening but i can imagine it can seem very very boring if you are just watching someone play cards back and forth i don't know but i love it i've heard rumor that there is going to be dlc doing the the old hunters dlc which has all my favorite bosses in the entire bloodborne video game so i'm hoping that that is that comes to fruition but yeah bloodborne is an exquisite game i love it so that's my number two still hard for me to i, I, I still want i still want it but i, just, I yeah. would say if you're gonna drop the money people are asking for like if you're gonna get it get you have to get everything just so you get the full experience but only do that when you beat the video game yeah that would be my suggestion because if you if you play the entire video game and you're like this was amazing then because it's not like oh well this game doesn't have that same problem that some others have where it's like well i'll just play the video game like the board game is different like enough that like the board game itself made me want to play the video game but it wasn't like instead of playing it you know right I'll probably that would be my suggestion. I'll probably if they happen to do a second Kickstarter with if they do that expansion, maybe they'll do this original stuff too. Mm -hmm. And I can yeah. get <clears throat> yeah, that would be yeah, that, that, was, that would be another <laughs> another good alternative. Yeah. All right. So my number two and number one are almost, I mean, I I had pretty much had to flip a coin to decide okay. which one is gonna be one and two. Um so my number two has been talked about already. Okay. Uh, I'm going to guess Final Girl. Yes. Dang. All right. I thought that would have been your number one. It, what the fuck is I your number I thought it was going to be two. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, for everything you said, I mean, I'm a solo gamer. That is my, probably my primary way of gaming. Um, just because I live in BFE and, and don't have a gaming family. So, but, uh, but yeah, um, this was, was right. I mean, I still, I still to this day love hostage negotiator, um, uh, just for the mechanics alone. Like I, like you said, I mean, I, the story's little is weak in that, but I still just like the deal of just the challenge of trying to win the game, you know, mm -hmm. um, because some the solo games that I get tired of are the ones, oh, you have to, if you get this certain amount of points, you get bronze. If you get this certain, you know, like oh. the score, like, oh, those are my a, favorite. Well, when there's a win loss condition are my favorite yeah. solo games. Um, <clears throat> so then this came out and this was like, I love hor horror movies and stuff. And, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this was just, as soon as I saw this announced, I'm like, oh my God. It's like, yeah. this is going to be the best thing. And I haven't played all of them yet, obviously, but oh, neither I, just, I. <laughs> I just love it. And then knowing that there's more coming, um, it, it takes a special game to not make this my number one. Um, <clears throat> so, so we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, this one's just, just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And and uh i've seen i've seen people actually play this with two players 
Um, oh, but really? they, just, they, they just both, I mean, it's, it's weak two players. Like they, you both control the, the that, one character. I mean, yeah, that just sounds kind of odd. I know, I know, but I mean, you, you could play with another person and just kind of both of you are controlling the character just to have, you know, decisions to bounce off of people and stuff, but it's a solo game all the way. Um, especially if you can play it with some nice horror music in the background and stuff like that. It's always nice, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah. Um, so my number two is final girl. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, that's about all I can say about it. It's, it's a superb experience. Yeah. So it's funny because someone just commented on my uh, discussion on this and, mm -hmm. uh, he was, he was <laughs> like, I'm glad people comment. And I guess, I mean, it's fine if you don't want to back this game or get it. But he was talking about the storage solution was a problem, which is already being fixed in second edition. But he was like, he's like, I don't know. He wants to play as a killer, like have that as an option. And I'm like, <clears throat> okay, I see where you're coming from, but that's not what the game is. But then his other thing was like, why don't they have guys? <laughs> I'm like, it's called Final Girl, you idiot. <laughs> like, like it's it's final girl you're playing that's the whole theme why aren't you that's weren't the, there guy characters yeah the whole 80s final and 90s girl horror, the 80s and 90s horror tropes of yeah. always having that final girl yeah <laughs> so it's like uh whatever like <laughs> it's just don't get the game then if, if you want to play as a guy like go play uh, literally any other game <clears throat> all right or pretend or just pretend. Yeah, just pretend <laughs> that, that you are playing as and just it's called Final Guy. You know okay. how in those in that <laughs> those horror tropes where the guy is always the last one. You know go how that like never a, happens? Go get like a Street Masters mini of a guy and put down there and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And then just pretend it's a long haired dude. Yeah. Like and just dude, that's just that was that was the most bizarre complaint I've heard. I totally understand the storage solution. And hell, even being like as an option to play as the killer, that would be a neat, a neat thing. Like a 1v1 game where kind of like uh, Dead by Daylight. Yeah. One person playing as the killer, one person's playing as the, the last one standing. But no, that's not what the game was designed as. Anyway, yep. Yep, yep. I just ha I had to look that up because I was like, oh, I wonder what this guy said. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, uh, went off this weird <laughs> mansplaining rant. All right, my number one. Can you guess what my number one is? It's obvious. It is so obvious <laughs> that it's yeah, it's obviously Cascadia. Yep, uh, yep, number it. number one. Um, <clears throat> it's it's Shawson, <laughs> the political party game. No, all right, you can really pull it up. It's Juicy yeah. Fruits. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with without a doubt, this was this is easily the best gaming experience I've had. Like. Uh, like just just overall uh, Ryan Lockett's magnum opus of of a game it just feels like everything he's made has culminated to to this like from above and below uh, near and far it's just like oh okay this is what a true sandbox board game looks like and like because you really yeah you're given quests and it's like okay well I guess you can try and follow those, but you can really just be like, oh, let's just keep heading south. You can literally do whatever you want in this game and get just so many. Like I've, I've done a full series on the channel halfway through uh, just to have a, a review of it, got a 10 out of 10. Even then I was like, fuck, it's an 11 out of 10. I can't rate this game high enough uh, just by how amazing that this is. And What's even better about that, it's not this 90-something scenario campaign. It's not a campaign you'll never finish because it's too much. There is a finite ending, and that in and of itself leads to you wanting to play it again because there's like 30 like different uh, – I can't remember what they're called – like stone things. Like, to, uh, God, what are they called? <laughs> like, I don't know because uh, I haven't played this game. <laughs> <laughs> you are trying to get – um totems there's like so many different totems and then there's like 13 different endings uh just based off of what totems you had how you're ending the game gives you a different totally different uh ending so we got one of them and be as a good 
like video game does, you can look at it and be like, oh man, if we play it again, let's try and get those again, those same totems, so we can uh, try and do this ending. But your game, I think we had like 13 total sessions, um, each about an hour long, but it was so manageable. And you could, I could see people sitting down and getting completely lost and six hours fly by and you're just like, mm-hmm. oh my God, just because you're engrossed the entire time. The, the atmosphere is amazing. The writing is fantastic. The choices are, uh, I can't think of high enough praise. And then you add the combat, which is a puzzle. You, whenever you're fighting, you have terror sized cards like, and they're grid based. And so how you deal damage, you place them out, but you might want to cover up something because they do an attack back and like, you can easily get knocked out. It You can do a significant amount of damage or they can do a significant amount of damage back to you. So how you're incorporating, how you want to fight them, uh, at least for me, it just works so well. Like I'm engaged. It's one of the best combat systems I've seen in a campaign style game. Like there's no dice. You still have the fate deck to see if you hit or not, but you can mitigate that with items you get. It's just, I... I could just go on and on. Go and listen to my two discussions on it if you want to know a little bit more. But I just, I, I hope, like I need it in my life for Ryan Lockett to do another game like this. Like, uh, I know there's now or never coming out, but I can't imagine that he wouldn't be working on something else like this. Right. So, so we'll see. Like. I mean, God, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, this one, whenever I played it, I was like, yeah, nothing's beaten this. <laughs> and I played a lot of games. I crunched in a lot of 21, 2021 games. Didn't even make the top 10. But yeah, nothing. I was like, there's there's nothing beating this game. So yeah, I, easily my number one. I need to find it. I just can't find it for cheap enough. So <clears throat> no, you probably won't. At this point, I would say the two hundred dollars is worth it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just dropped my gaming money down on another Kickstarter game that gotcha. I get played this year. <laughs> Merchants. <clears throat> so uh all right, my number one. Any guess? Uh so I initially thought it was Final Girl, and then since you did a, t- a coin toss, um I, I, then I was like, wait a minute. Okay, I have to look this up. Is it Imperium Classics? It is. Yeah. I mean, it could be one or the other, like this, Classics or Legends. I mean, they're, yeah. they're the same game. I initially like thought Hadrian's Wall, but that, I don't think you've played I, it yet. I played it, but not enough. And, okay. You know, like, yeah. it's This one um, is another one of those. You know, we played it two-player. Um, I've played it two-player a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, I prefer solo on it yeah. um, just because of the time it takes and stuff. It still is a longer game solo, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, it, it, this one just sings for me. As soon as I saw this was announced and I knew it was deck building, I knew it was solo focused. I mean, this mm-hmm. was one that was on my radar. I jumped all over it and got both of them as soon as I possibly could. Um, Pretty much, you are just building up your civilization um, uh, using a deck building mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, you're buying cards off of a row to elevate your your civilization, all the while um, trying to quell the uh, unrest cards and the revolts and all that crap that happens. Um, <clears throat> it's just plus. I mean, I, I've said this multiple times throughout this list. But it's got Miko art. I like the Miko art. <laughs> you know, Miko's so. Yeah, you've got like four games. games. God, <laughs> top ten Miko art of 2021 is your list. <laughs> you well, like psycho. Raiders of the North Sea and all the Paladin, all those games are Mikos. Yeah. So. But um, like him or hate him, he's raking it in as far as uh, That's true art money. But yeah, um, it really is. But yeah, this one, you know, it's it's a it's a simple game, you know, for all intents and purposes. <laughs> But uh, and there's you know there's a lot of key terms and stuff. The rule book's pretty good though at keeping everything in line. Um, yeah. But I just like the variation of 
of the uh, civilizations. You know, there's eight civilizations in the classics box. There's eight more in the legends box. The legends box are more like uh, the Arthurians and the Atlanteans and stuff. So they're a little more fictional, not necessarily a totally fictional, but a little more um, out there. You know, the classics one are your typical, you know, Romans, Viking, you know, Greece, Macedonia, stuff like that. Um, but uh, this one just hits on all things for me. Um, and like I said, I mean, because the game doesn't really change for solo. That I think that's the thing. Like when yeah. you're playing it solo or if you're playing it with two people, I mean, it, you're, you're, you're playing the same game for all intents and purposes. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is uh, a winner for me. It's going to be one of those that's always going to be around. I mean, it's going to be one that's going to keep messing around with my top 100 list and it's going to move up pretty rapidly because I play this game quite a bit. Yeah, I'll need to borrow this from you to uh, try it out solo. Because when we played it, like the 1v1, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was good. Like, um, <clears throat> But I think the for me, the uh uh civilizations weren't like at least they weren't obviously different enough maybe we just happened to play i mean we did kind of play similar i played what did i play rome you played play? rome and i played, played i'm looking at it right now i think i played rome actually you might have played rome who did i you play? played the greeks i think that's it yeah so i mean <laughs> they're, kind, they're pretty they're much kind of similar right yeah uh <laughs> no th you're right this this game is very very solid but it does seem like we didn't we didn't do anything we were just playing a solo game by it by with each other yeah at, um, at, the, at this point i've played every civilization at least once um and there uh, are some oh, from classics from both of them really okay yeah and because i played how this was, game quite a bit <laughs> how was the uh the arthurian very out there you know like okay the, the arthurians and um the uh uh utopians are the toughest to control and and there there it's just a lot of the manipulation you know it's uh the 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 the, the units change up a lot and stuff and the arthurian core deck you know has a lot of your typical mm -hmm. you know knights the round table stuff and all that jazz jazz yeah. so um but yeah they're not bad i'm it's hard for me to pick a favorite. I mean, they, they play, well, most of them play really different. Like the whole, the, I think it's the Celts. They're all about just, they're trying to load up other people's decks with unrest cards. <laughs> just trying to, I mean, okay. that's their whole deal is trying to, because once your unrest deck, I mean, go, you're, you're done, you know, I mean, it's, so you're just trying to just cram a bunch of unrest into their deck as much as possible, you know, and, different odds and so cool. so yeah and i and i like how the rule book for both of them it has their difficulty yeah. on there you know that's, that's nice. another thing so like if you're playing with somebody newer you know you can give them the easier easier deck mm -hmm. and stuff like that but but yeah i mean that's that's uh that's my number one uh and, and i think it won out over final girl just because i played this one a lot more recently no, that's fair too. i mean that that's how a lot of this is dictated. So real quick, you were talking about how uh, the Miko ranks is raking in a lot of money. Yeah. Well, he's able to do a lot of art because it's just, it's awful <laughs> art. It's, it's the easiest to make because here's the perfect example. I was able to do a Miko art <laughs> in, in two seconds and it's the girl on the, uh, the right. So there she is. <laughs> no obviously oh, no, you're, you're not you're not done it's not pointy enough <laughs> that is true yeah i really i tried to encapsulate the nose but and keep the rounded chin a little bit but yeah not quite not quite sharp see i mean well i didn't do the hair quite as right but it's pretty it's pretty close yeah there you go <laughs> i'm gonna take his job no it's that's all in good fun hopefully he doesn't see me at like gen con and in like the art section and stab me to death he's gonna draw a picture of you and it's gonna be like <laughs> it's like a caricature so you yeah. can get those at like the ren fair <laughs> uh anyway so those are our top 10 games of 2021 uh fantastic year in gaming like i was looking at 
at the rest of them. And like, uh, yeah, there was, there were just a lot that just were really, really good, but you got it. You got to pick 10. And, uh, so, uh, that's it, everyone. Hope 2021 was great for you. Hope 2022 is even better. Um, yeah, tell us what you think of these games in the comments below. Let us know your favorites of 2021 as well. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.